God is good all the time. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. I love you, beloved. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, I plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, for your love that was displayed through this perfect man, your perfect son, the one and only, the only righteous one, the only judge, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that, <laughs> that you would leave heaven to come and save us, being not worthy. <laughs> and then on top of that, Lord Jesus, that you would hang there on that cross like a piece of meat. We spit on you. We tortured you. We cussed at you. And you looked at us through eyes of God. And Father, I know what I deserve. I know that I deserve hell. I know that I deserve torture. I know that I deserve everything wrong and foolish. For that's who I was. But you, Lord Jesus Christ, saved me. Every soul, Father God, that is seated right now in your holy place, that has called on you, Lord Jesus Christ, you have saved them for all of eternity. And you gave us what you only deserve, Lord Jesus, and this is your peace, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I, I bless you. I boldly declare through your blood that, that whoever is the mouthpiece in your holy church, Open Arms Community Church, that Holy Spirit, you're the teacher. We are not. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Only Holy Spirit teaches in his holy church. And Father God, I just thank you that as you speak through us, that your presence, Father God, would fill us in the overflow and your anointing, Father God, would reign and reign and reign for all of eternity in our hearts and in our minds, Father. Bless us, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Amen. Are you happy to be here this morning? Yeah. Praise God. Um, as always, uh, Holy Spirit has a lot for us to go through. Praise God. And I am, I am so excited. Uh, we have to talk about the forgotten armor before we step into the message for today. And let me just go quickly as far as just telling you about this story that takes place in 1 Samuel 17. Verses, we're just going to go through three verses. The Holy Spirit said that's enough and then we're going to go into the message. Amen. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're just going to keep on starting that way. Amen. Praise God over half the room smiling now because they're like, I don't want to sing that again. But praise God we have salvation. Amen. All right, so let's get into this. Moreover, David said, and this is David when he was a youth. And now remember, all these, um, all these graphics that you saw on the screen, it, it led up to that battle. What's that battle? The, ball the battle between David and Goliath. Hallelujah. How many of you has, has faced some Goliaths in your life? Beloved church family, look around. You're not alone. Amen. How many of you right now are facing something right now? God knows. Amen. And glory to God, receive this in Jesus' name because God's all over your business. You know why? You made it his business. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. You made it his business. Father, this is what's going on. You take care of it. You know what Father says? You focus and worship me, I'll take care of it. Can I get an amen? amen? Oh, hallelujah. We don't focus on the Goliath now. I'm jumping ahead. But we don't focus on the Goliath now. We focus on God Almighty. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, hallelujah. This is what Brother David had to say. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Say it with me. He will deliver me. The same God that delivered David is the same God that lives on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Say it again like you mean it. My God will deliver me. 
Let's make it gooder and my house. Hallelujah. And my house. Oh, hallelujah. Let's just give God praise on that. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is what King Saul said. Because remember, there was a king at that time. His name is Saul. And Saul and David was having this conversation. Now, Saul is a godly brother too. At this point in this story, he's a godly brother. And he's looking at David. And can you imagine? Can you imagine Saul the king, right? So for some reason, I think kings look like this. Right? Some of you, like some of you were five minutes ago. It's all right. We're royalty. Amen? Amen. If you're saved. And, okay. <laughs> and you could just imagine Saul focus on what David is saying. And here's the king looking at Saul. And this is what Saul said. Go and the Lord be with you. Can I get an amen? amen? That's great to hear, right? As far as confirmation. You know, if I was David talking to Saul and I'm like looking at Saul. And I'm saying all these things, listen, my God did this for me, my God did that for me, my God's going to take care of this uncircumcised Philistine. Some of y'all need to hear it this way, my God will take care of this cancer. My God will take care of this anxiety, amen? My God will take care of this worry. My God will take care of this sickness. My God will take care of this poverty. My God will take care of this lack. My God will take care of this stronghold. My God will take care of it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, it don't matter what you've been through. Guess what? You've been through it. Amen. That means you ain't there no more. God deserves a hallelujah for that. Amen. Let's stop talking about where we was. Amen. Let's stop talking about where we was and let's start prophesying of where we're going. Can I get an amen? Where we're going. Mm. So he says this. Now check this out. We're going to go. We're going to go in the next sentence now. Verse 38, so Saul, King Saul, clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail, you know, like what knights wear, chain mail. David fastened his sword, not David's sword, Saul's sword, sis, Saul's sword. Say with me, Saul's sword, and also Saul's armor. And he tried to walk, but he had not tested him. And I love this illustration because I searched and searched. You guys may think I'm crazy. I don't care. Pray for me. Don't judge me. Pray for me. Amen. I'm crazy for the Lord. Hallelujah. But I looked and looked for an hour of a picture that can show this, you know. And this is the only one that I could find. Here's David, right, as a youth. And you could picture just like that, that this brother's like, what is you have me dressed up like a clown, right? Now, you could see the heart of Saul because he's a king, and rightfully so, because he's been through many battles. But then at the same time, you could see where Saul is, where he said, here, David, I did bless you and say, go on, the Lord will be with you, but this is what you need to wear to fight this battle. I love it, Sister Ashley. You're absolutely right. No, no. And this is, what it's, this is what happens next. David said to Saul, here is boldness now. Because I need you to understand that in this time frame, if you even looked at royalty wrong. If you even looked at royalty wrong. So here David is now saying back to him. I cannot walk with these. For I have not tested them, so David took them off. Can I get a hallelujah? This message is titled, say it with me, stand firm. We're going to open up in the book of wisdom in the new covenant from the book of James. Yes, I said it. From the book of James, this is the book of wisdom in the new covenant church. You want wisdom? Go to the book of James. Oh, my goodness, Holy Spirit will lack a fire. I mean, I'm talking, Principal Brady, I'm talking about afar. You ain't seen such a far until you feel Holy Spirit far. Amen? James 4, 7, we're going to open that, and we're also going to close in James. That's why the, uh, that's blue. So we're going to open and close in James. We're going to go into the Old Covenant, Old Testament, in the book of Proverbs. Guess what? Before Lord Jesus Christ, Brother Chris, that was the book of wisdom. Proverbs, Kings. Ooh, Hallelujah. 
Look, I'm looking at royalty. Do you feel like royalty? Hallelujah. Let me, let me say something to you. You have to make the choice to worship God as royalty for the feeling to come. If you wait for the feeling to come, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Some of you are like, oh, I don't feel, I don't feel good. I don't feel healed. I don't feel like royalty. Well, guess what? Because that's your focus. But when your focus is Christ, when you're focused on the blood, when you're focused on your identity in him, when you're focused on a father that loves you so much that he would give everything, and you could, you could just imagine what God watched. As Lord Jesus Christ went through it all for you. Say it with me, for me. Oh, now get ready because God is going to light a far in you. We're going we're gonna to go into the Luke 10, verse 27, from the mouth of agape, Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to go into his words. And then we're going to go into Ephesians 6, 13. Because remember, we're talking about the forgotten piece of armor, the forgotten armor. Amen? Are you all ready? My wife is. Are y'all ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Remember, Lord Jesus is standing right here. Yes. Amen. I know he lives in your heart, Holy Spirit is, but come on now, family. I believe with all my heart the way you bless him in this very moment, his presence goes before you in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, the battle was already won. The battle was already won when David said, my God will deliver me. From this uncircumcised Philistine. The battle was already won at that point. Let me explain. See, because there's some of you that get it, but there's some of you right now that's struggling with that. God acts on his divine principles. What is his divine principle? If you truly believe in faith that Jesus Christ is who he is, then you speak the victory and Father God goes before you and the war is already won in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. My God will deliver me. Oh, pastor, I don't feel like it. It doesn't matter how you feel. Pastor, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. We got to be reminded, you're talking about a little youth now. And then you're talking about a 10-foot giant. Did that look promising? So despite what your situation looks like, despite what the doctors tell you, despite what your bank account looks like, despite how many relationships you have gone through in the past, guess what? Say it with me. It's dead and gone. Say it with me, uncircumcised Philistine. Hey, I love it. Some of y'all said Philistine. Some of y'all said Filipino in there. It's like, what, 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 what happened? But hey, God knows your heart. Amen. Listen, we're just having fun. We're worshiping. Amen. But you know what I'm talking about. Say it with me, that foul thing is dead and gone. In Jesus' name. Let's give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Therefore, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will. Whew. Elder Howard, my beloved elder, God Almighty is telling us that you submit to Christ, his anointing in you, and you resist the devil. The devil can't do anything to you. Wait a minute. I almost popped my hip, my, popped my hip on that one. You're telling me, Brother William, that when I'm intimate with my God and my focus is 100% on him, that if I choose to resist the devil, that Satan and all the demons are going to run away from me? Beloved church family, am I the only one that's reading this correctly? Because I'm not that good in English. Hold me accountable. Am I wrong when I'm telling you this? That God Almighty himself says, you submit yourself to God. You give it to God. Amen? What, Pastor, explain. What do I submit? You submit your identity. Get ready now. Get ready now. You submit everything you think you know about yourself. 
See, some of us, we know too much about ourselves. Oh, pastor, I got a problem right here, and I've been through eight doctors, and they said I got this and this terse, this osis and this most osis, and then I got this osis. So I'm taking all this uh, medication for these osises, and you know, oh, and you know, they got that nerve that runs up here, and it comes, and it makes a, it makes a right turn right about right there. <laughs> Forgive me if I'm being rude and offending you, but God is exposing this devil. And what God is exposing is that sometimes we know so much about what's wrong rather than knowing so much of what's right. Right, Brother Logan? Right? Sometimes we know so much about what's wrong then rather focusing, focusing, right, on what's right. Can I get an amen? amen? You could tell me all this medication you're on, how you wake up at 3 in the morning with dry mouth, right? But then the moment that I say to you, have you asked God about taking all that medication? Have you submitted it to the Lord? you just don't know my doctor said yeah but listen to what our God said can I get an amen? amen that this foul thing will flee from you amen. say it with me I submit myself so these are the two things that we're going to talk about submitting ourselves and we're talking about two things you see one foot and the other foot right left and right foot now I know not everybody has two feet most of us do right and if you don't have two feet, then whatever thing that you use to hold it, it's one, two. Can I get an amen? amen. I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny now, but if you got one foot, then you have something else, right, holding you. And this is what God right now wants to talk about, amen? Say with me, stand firm. Stand firm. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, says simply this. Many of you have memorized this, but we're going to go deep into this, Brother Mike. We're going to go deep. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. Remember heart of gratitude? This is what God means about having a heart of gratitude. That you're always mindful of what God did on the cross for you. You see, when you have this kind of intimacy with God, you're unshakable. Because this world is designed to try to hurt you. This world is designed to judge you. This world runs, I like to say, on drama, negativity, right? This is what this world wants to do, is to create so much chaos and turmoil in your life that you become a part of it. That you actually allow yourself to start thinking crazy. You see, when I say this, I'm just going to throw myself under the bus. At such a young age, my identity was stolen by the devil. I blame God for it. And when I say it was stolen from the devil, I'm talking about hurtful, abusive things, sexually, mentally, physically, that was done to me that I blame God for, and it became who I was. And then on top of that, who I was, broken, angry, hurt, I started trying to find comfort, not only with other people who shared in that misery and victim mentality, but then I started putting things in my body to make me feel good. And there was nothing good about what I was putting in my body because it was just killing me and putting more bondage upon bondage on me. And it gets to the point in your life where you would hope and pray that you wake up but guess what I didn't I believed it all throughout my young adult life when I got out of gangs and all that stuff and I got back into school and I did so great in school I thought it was me but it was the Lord's hand on my life guess what I started trying to do brother PJ I started I started doing the career thing had the family thing going the career thing going Right? Because that's what America paints the picture of success. 
right? Get your degrees. Go to school. Do all this stuff. Get a good job. Work through the ranks. Have a, have a wife, children. Get the house, right? Get all these things, things, things. And I was just consuming myself with all these things. But may I say, the Bible says that if you build anything on sand, eventually it's going to fall over. And my life crumbled so hard. You see, beloved family, right now God is trying to reach out. It doesn't matter how old you are. But God is reaching out to every heart in here. What is going on with you right now? Where are you at? Are you trusting in God? It says right here, trust. Remember I said earlier, maybe there's somebody that doesn't have two feet. God bless you. But there's something that you're using, right? And I love this illustration because if you have something, you have to lean on that, right? To walk. But here God Almighty is saying, don't even lean on that. Lean on me. Amen. Trust in me. Amen? See, we try to lean. We try to lean on our understanding. God's saying, will you trust that what I did through Christ is perfect? God Almighty is telling you how much he loves you right now. That he looks through your life through the eyes of mercy and grace. And that he is for you and that he is with you and that he is in you. And that God Almighty is saying, if you would trust in him, he will orchestrate your path. He will divinely set you up. He will set you up for success. He will rebuke the enemy. But what we need to do is trust God Almighty. Amen? Amen. Do you trust the Lord today? Amen. Amen? I love it because he says, I will direct your path. The beauty of when God directs your path, oh, it just gets gooder and gooder. Amen? When God leads you, praise God. I said it not too long ago. I think about all these celebrities that have all these bodyguards around them, right? And what do they do? They carve out a path. Am I the only one that knows this? If you're saved and you know it, clap. Right? And I love looking at that. I just love, I, I just love observing. I'm nosy. I am. Watch me now. I'm nosy. Watch out. If you're, in my, if you're in my side of view, whether you're at Walmart or at the bank, I'm nosy. I'm just, I love to observe. <laughs> I just love to observe, amen. I love you. I'm not judging. I'm just, yeah, what you got going on over there, you know? <laughs> Pray for me. Say it with me, trust. So you have submit yourself, resist the devil. He will flee from you. Then you have trust God with all your, say it with me, heart. But this is what God wants to show. The true trust and submission takes place in the mind and in the heart when you submit and trust not only in your heart, but also in your mind. You see, when we come to know Jesus, hear me now. When you receive Lord Jesus, you know something happened in my life. Right? I'm saved through your blood, Father. I'm yours. But this is what happens. The mind wants to start playing tricks on you. The mind wants to start telling you, yeah, you got Jesus, but you're going to have to take this in your own hands. Yeah, you have Jesus, but you ain't getting no better. I'm telling you right now, that's the voice of the devil. Yeah, you have Jesus, but... It's up to you to make up your mind, are you going to entertain these thoughts, these voices from the devil, or are you going to say, I hear you, devil, but God. Amen. Amen. But God. Say it with me, but God. When we say, but God, this is what the devil goes, remember, submit. You submit those thoughts to the Lord Jesus Christ. You speak against those thoughts, and the devil says, I can't, I can't mess with this person. Hey, guys, come on, or you're going to get your head cut off. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say it with me, resist. Yes. When we do this, when we, submit, when we submit and trust all of our mind and our heart, the breakthrough takes place. Say it with me, grounded. Yes. And as you can see, the agreement took place. This is, say it with me, identity. 
If your identity is in Christ as a beloved child of God, this means that you're sold out in your mind and you're sold out in your heart. Well, pastor, help me. What if something keeps tugging on my heart and it keeps on trying to torment my mind? This is where the Bible gives us tools to fight against such things. Number one, start thanking God. Start thanking God because the devil wants you to get so tormented where you're no longer thanking him. Start thanking God. That's number one. Amen? Amen? Number one, thank God. Say it with me. Thank God. God. Number two, surround yourself with like-minded believers in Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit-filled Christians. Can I get an amen? amen? When you surround yourself, oh. When you surround yourself, when you, when you purposely surround yourself with other like-minded, beloved children of God that worship Lord Jesus Christ, there is something supernatural beyond what we can comprehend or understand. Amen? It's the power that is in a beloved child of God. It's the power of Christ in a beloved child of God. It's the power of God in you and in me that when we come together, we can encourage one another and the supernatural takes place and you manifest the glory of God. Hallelujah. Say with me, I am grounded. No, you're not grounded in a bad way. I'm grounded in Christ. (laughs) My brother said thank you. Right? You're grounded in Christ. Amen? And I love this because when you're grounded in Christ, this is when repentance manifests. This is what Lord Jesus Christ ministered when he walked this earth. Repent. Why did Lord Jesus say this as he was walking this earth? Right? Why? He Repent. 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 God Almighty in the flesh, his name is Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Why would he go out? Repent. 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 Why? God Almighty is saying, change your mind. We live in such a hateful, judgmental, fallen world right now. Let me ask you something. Since when did a voice have a color? I'm going to say it from the pulpit because it's a lie from the pit of hell. It's either the voice of God Almighty or the voice of a devil. That's the bottom line. Can I get an amen? When, when, when do, my question is, when did we start doing this? When did it be okay now? When did it be okay that we, we're openly judging each other as Christians? How is that? God has nothing to do with that. God hates that. God wants us to love him first. Amen. I don't want to jump ahead. Hallelujah. Say it with me. I'm grounded. This is how grounded we are. This is from the mouth of agape, Lord Jesus Christ. Who is agape? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Can you take one out and and serve the others? No, but this is what this world wants to do, right? Right? This is what I just had this conversation not too long ago. Hey, man, brother, you got a really good spirit on you. No, it's Holy Spirit. Well, no, I'm just saying you got good vibes. No, that's Holy Spirit in me. Can I get an amen? That's Holy Spirit. And here in my heart, brother DJ, cool, I mean, cool, cool cat. I I praise a brother, but from the fruit, he didn't want to hear nothing about Jesus. And I told him, listen, you only get Holy Spirit from Jesus. No, no, man, I'm talking about you got good vibes, good. No. No. It's either Holy Spirit or the devil. And I don't got the devil. Can I get a hallelujah? I got Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. So there's nothing about, oh, amen. Oh, you know what, sis? You got a good spirit on you. You tell him, check yourself. Jesus is my Lord. And you're talking to Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Amen. Say with me, check yourself. I love it when you say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen. Check yourself before you wreck yourself because it's bad for your health. I come real stealth. (laughs) <laughs> Brother PJ said, that's enough. <laughs> my, my beloved up here going, what did I tell you in the house? Right? But there's truth in that, right? You're the only one that can check yourself. Amen? God gives us free will. Some of us think because we're Christians, God's going to control you like a robot. No, he don't. 
but he lives in you. He talks to you every moment of every day. But it's up to you if you want to hear his voice. Can I get an amen? There's some of you that hear his voice but don't listen. Mm, let me, I'm not going to look at nobody. Some of you hear his voice but you don't listen. Right? Not looking at nobody. And that's, the, that's part of the problem right there. That's part of the problem. Right? That you want to hear from God and when he speaks, uh, let me pray about that. What are you praying for? God Almighty gave you the answer. Don't do it. There ain't no sense. Call the elders in it. They're going to tell you the same thing. Call the pastor. I'm going to tell you the same thing. Right? What does God have to say about it? He spoke. Now listen. Can I get an amen? amen? This is what Lord Jesus Christ had to say. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Hallelujah. With all your strength and with all your mind. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Can we agree on that? Heart of gratitude. Amen. Can we agree on that? That right now, that's the number one thing God wants us to do. Love him with, say with me, everything. That's more than everything. Now, when you love him with everything, well, pastor, explain. You don't love your wife more than you love Jesus. You don't love your husband the more you love Jesus. You don't love your children more than you love Jesus. Listen, beloved church family, we pray every day for our entire church family. Every day. And I know the things that are trying to come against our children. Yes, I say our because we're one house, one body in Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But we have to keep on pleading the blood of Lord Jesus and keep speaking life. Amen. Amen. That no matter what nonsense they're doing, no matter what nonsense, listen, just pray, Father, remove the scales off their eyes that this devil is trying to steal their soul. But Father, I thank you that Lord Jesus Christ, nothing can come against you. And I declare right now through the power of your resurrection, Holy Spirit, that your presence will be in them and through them and all over their lives, all the days of their lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. You got to speak this way. Hallelujah. Declare this over your children. Declare this over your family. Amen. You don't have kids yet, but you want kids? Speak it over your future children. Hallelujah. Speak it over. Hallelujah. Claim it. It's already done paid for. He paid it all. Every blessing, every breakthrough is for you. And he wants you to have it. There's this false humility going around, and I come across it a lot in the, in the community. Well, pastor... I don't pray for nothing because I'm just blessed where I am. And if this is the way the Lord wants it, then so be it. And I would kindly tell them, that's what your expectations are. Do you hear me, church family? That's what your expectations are. And I don't judge you. God bless you. Because I pray that what you're speaking is you're content with the Lord Jesus. But I also want to pray over you God's best. Can I get an amen? See, we could easily deceive ourselves through false humility. Oh, well, if God never wants to do this for me, I'm perfectly fine. Listen, you're already speaking diarrhea of the mouth. You already spoke out. God ain't going to do it for you. And that you're perfectly happy the way you are. But why don't you... Change that prayer in thanksgiving and saying, Father, I thank you that you gave me Lord Jesus Christ and in Christ everything is possible. Amen. Right? Everything is possible. Amen? The second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. This carries over from the heart of gratitude. Amen? Remember for the church of Lebanon, Kentucky, Open Arms Community Church, love God with everything first. And love your neighbor. Amen. And the third was, have a grateful heart. Right? When you're surrounding yourself with grateful people, what happens to you? Amen. Everything. Oh, my goodness. Can I tell you? It's like having a 1975 TV set to a 2021 8K TV. It's like, oh, my goodness. Life is so great. How does it start? Be thankful. 
Be grateful. Amen? If you're not a grateful person, I'm going to tell you right now, the enemy has his foot right there in your life. Well, pastor, how do I remove that foot from, 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 my, from my life? How do I refu- remove that enemy's foot from my life? It's as simple as, I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me, stand your ground. Hallelujah. This is what Ephesians 6 says. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. You see, it's amazing because a lot of us, and and God bless you, if you you grew up in church, I grew up in religion. There's a difference. Um, But if you grew up as far as, you know, having a relationship with Lord Jesus, God bless you. That's awesome. That's favor over your life. And um, well done to your beloved parents who, who raised you that way. Amen. But there's many of us that rememorize the armor of God, right? There's some of us that I know here in our church family that every day they pray on the armor of God. Every day, right? The helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, right? Go like that with me, right? I just love doing that because I think of a, a wrestler, like when they said, I want the championship match. Come on. Right? Champion, right? <laughs> you like that? Champion, right? What, the sword of the spirit, right? The breastplate of righteousness. The shield of faith. Right? We talked about the helmet. Do this, the helmet. The helmet of salvation. Right? We talk about all these things. And we pray it. We speak it out. You know, that, Father, I want to be mindful of my salvation. Father, I want to be mindful of what my salvation costs. That, Lord Jesus, you love me. Right? Right? I want to be mindful of my salvation, Father God, because the only reason why I have salvation is through you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's his salvation, right? I want to be mindful of my salvation because you saved me. But the saving part isn't just that one incident. The saving grace of God is umpteen times a day as much as you want it. How do you activate this saving grace in your life? Thanksgiving. Being grateful that, Father, you saved me. See, the moment the enemy tries to attack you, or maybe you live with somebody who's just absolutely negative. Maybe you live with somebody that's just, you know, evil. God give you weapons to come against that. What is it? Get the anointing oil out. Amen? We're the only church family that I know of that we provide you with anointing oil from Israel. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't from here. It could be, it, it, listen, hear my heart. It could be from any... God knows your heart. But as a pastor, that's what God told me to provide his holy people. So I have to be obedient. But my point is, is that take your oil out. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, anoint them. If they don't want you to touch them, guess what? Something's going to get touched that, yeah. Come on, Principal Sarah. Right? Flick them. Well, do a drive-by. Just, mm, mm, mm. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Mm. You don't want none of that? Mm. Right? Right? Flick <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen. You know what I love? The laughter of God is, we have all these angels right here sitting in in this sanctuary. And God Almighty knows what we're doing in worshiping Him and exercising this. But are are you fighting this fight or are you just allowing things to happen? Right? But this is up to us to activate all of these things. Weapons, I love to say weapons of mass destruction. I want every day of my life, every day of my life, in Jesus' name, not boasting ever. I rebuke myself. I die every day in Christ. Every day, umpteen times a day, I continuously. If I look at something wrong, if I have a bad thought, Father, I'm sorry. Change me, Lord. And guess what? He does. But we're not perfect. Can you say it with me? I'm not perfect. But say this with me, Lord Jesus Christ is. is. And all God is asking is, will you allow him to flow in your life? Amen? Amen. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. 
Holy Spirit told me to share this with you, and this is just life-changing, life-breaking. So please pay attention. When Peter stepped out on, this, on the water, Lord Jesus Christ called him, come. He stepped out in faith, right? And he was walking on water. But when, when Peter took his eyes off of Lord Jesus Christ, what did he see that he started sinking? Waves. You see this? The one who doubts is like a wave. If you hang around with doubters, naysayers, if you hang around with people that just want to speak negativity, grumbling and complaining, if you want to hang around these kind of people, guess what? They will be the waves in your life. And these waves, their only purpose is, is to make you start doubting and to start fearing your situation so that you start sinking. Say it with me, no more. Listen, again, oh, you got to listen to what God says about those who doubt. Look at this. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Say it with me. Never doubt. Beloved church family, I know that I'm not talking to just one here. I'm talking to many right now. The devil is trying, whether, whatever it is, whether it's a situation, maybe it's a time frame in your life or something that has happened to you. But the devil keeps trying to make you doubt. God is saying, will you leave that doubt, that doubt at the altar today? Will you crucify that doubt? Will you say, I want none of that? Because God Almighty said that if you choose to doubt, expect nothing from him. Can I get an amen? amen? Say it with me, stand firm. Amen. If you all would, can you stand up with me? Praise God. We're talking about the forgotten armor. And this forgotten armor is simply this. When we know that our mind and our heart submits and trust in God I'm going to tell you right now there's no place I'd rather be amen there's no place I'd rather be than that intimacy with my God that I completely surrender every thought and my heart to God Almighty amen when you submit this way to God you stand your ground that you trust him you see what happened with David is he tried to stand his ground with all of Saul's armor on him. And you saw that funny picture that we shared earlier of that little cartoon character, right? And it wasn't tailored to him. It was somebody else's armor. You see, sometimes as children of God, we pick up things of what other people do in their relationship with God. Hear me now. That's between them and God. You worship God the way you worship God. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. Because so many people want to, want to, like I said, I confess to you guys, I'm nosy. Right? But if I'm not careful, if I'm not careful, I can allow that nosiness to start affecting how I have a relationship with God. You know, if you love to sing, you sing your heart out to the Lord. It don't matter what you sound like. I do it all the time, right? If it's, if it's the way you, you work at your job place and, and, and you just work real hard, listen, work your heart out because guess what? The whole time you're just blessing God. If it's you, you know, raising your kids, right? Boy, you raise them kids in a godly way and you show the Lord that I'll do everything for you, Lord, as I raise these children. Whatever it is that you do, do it intimately between you and the Lord but don't try to pick up other people's armor because God is saying right now he wants us say with me I am he wants us to stand firm and how do we stand firm we stand as we are meaning that father you love me that father God you created me the way I am I don't need to look like nobody I don't need to act like anybody. You love me, God. 
You have to come to terms in your relationship with God. Listen, if you think that it's about going to every conference that's available and listening to every preacher that's available, and listen, you're missing it. Holy Spirit saying, wake up. Say with me, God lives in me. And you, glory to God, look at you. On this beautiful 4th of July, happy 4th, you came here to, to worship. And you could feel God's presence just flowing through you. Amen. Say with me, stand firm. Here is the gospel of our peace. A God, a Father that loves you. A perfect Son, His sacrifice, our Lord Jesus Christ, to show you how much He loves you. In what He endured on that cross for you. But He didn't leave it there. A spirit, say His name, Holy Spirit, who loves you so much that He wants to live abundantly in and through you. This is the gospel of peace. In John 14, I believe it's verse 27, Lord Jesus Christ says, my peace I leave you. My peace I give you. He's talking about Holy Spirit. He says, I give you what the world don't give you. I give to you. And this is what you received when you were saved through the blood in the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So say it with me, with all of me, I will stand firm in Jesus Christ my Lord. And we always like to have fun in our worship services and we're going to have a song for the altar call, a couple songs. And please come, come as you are. But remember, maybe there's something going on in your relationship with God right now that you picked up things, maybe from people that are close to you. I'm sorry that that happened to you. But God right now wants you to lay it down at the altar. Amen. But this is what God has for us with this stand firm. With all of me, I will submit, trust, and never doubt. Faithfulness is repentance manifested. Say it with me. Faithfulness is repentance manifested. I believe and declare in Jesus' name. That as we come to this altar, that God Almighty will flow in your heart and in your mind. And you will leave here never the same. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.